But I'll just make it clear that only counted as one. Um, question number eight, the Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health. On which date and by what method did he advise Cabinet of his decision to dispense with the national health targets? The Honourable Dr David Clark. Mr Speaker, this matter did not need to go to Cabinet. The data is still being Order. collected, but we are no longer spending tens of thousands of dollars publishing it. We are developing new measures to ensure that health dollars are delivering improved health outcomes for New Zealanders. Those measures will be taken to Cabinet in due course. Does he agree with the Prime Minister who said of child poverty reduction targets, quote, our plan is to put an end to the debate over how we measure poverty by finally agreeing a set of robust measures, but also requiring successive governments to set targets against them, end quote. And if so, why are targets a good thing for child poverty reduction, but not health improvement? Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, where there are a broad range of uh, measures, uh, reporting that demonstrates that public money is being well spent on services that can improve, uh, drive improvement in health outcomes. Where there is a narrow range of targets, that can incentivise movement away from where it would produce best outcomes for New Zealanders. To use some of the examples in the, ta in the targets of the former national government, we have targets for childhood obesity that measure the number of times someone's referred, not if they're actually getting any better. Likewise for tobacco, if people are educated, not if they're actually giving up smoking. Mr Speaker, I think the public can see that it makes sense to have a broad range of targets that actually achieve the outcomes that New Zealanders would expect, not a narrow range of targets that drives perverse incentives in the system. In light of his answer that the scrapping of the health targets did not need to go to Cabinet, why did the Prime Minister say in this question time that they did go? Uh, Mr Speaker, the, um, I, I, I think a, he is characterising... A point of order, the right point of order. Order. Winston Mr Speaker, that member should not be allowed to get away with get, uh, predicating, a, predicating a question on a falsehood, which he just did. Go and check the hand side. Point of order. Point of order, Mr Speaker. A point of order, the Honourable I, I asked the Acting Prime Minister a very clear question about why this didn't go to Cabinet. He made clear it did. Um, I'm, I'm not prepared to referee this. I've had an assurance from the acting from the Prime Minister that he did not say that. Uh, and and on that on that basis uh, the question is out of order. The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. In respect of both in order, both of you, please. Well I think that the Prime Minister will stand withdraw and apologise. I think I'll withdraw and apologise. Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, in respect of his uh, reply to my supplementary question, referencing and criticising the vagueness of obesity targets, is he aware that those targets were introduced, those very targets were introduced in 2007 by the former Health Minister, the Honourable Pete Hodgson? <laughs> Mr Speaker, this government acts on evidence. I don't know what that government did in its day. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. The question is. No, I, no I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need a point of order, I need an answer. Mr. Speaker, um, there are a range of targets that were introduced over time. There are performance measures that have been improved over time. We support those ones uh, that are, are improving the outcomes for New Zealanders, not ones that are driving perverse incentives. No, it's still not an answer. Oh. Answer the question, Mr. please. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not sure whether that particular one was introduced by Mr Hodgson as the members suggesting. OK, thank you. Is that sufficient? Yeah. Uh, to the Minister, does he stand by a statement, quote... When the overall statistics showed that the number of electives was going up, yet in centres like Northland, Auckland, counties Manukau, Bay of Plenty and Waikato, if Avastin injections and skin lesion removals were taken out of those pumped up statistics, the actual number of surgeries was dropping, end quote. And if so, will he release those statistics? Speaker, uh, the statistics that I was referring to were ones that were given by the previous government when I was in opposition. They were reported in a news story on TV3 and used for that story, and they showed that when uh, Aviston injections and skin lesion removals uh, were taken out, um, that in many areas of the country, these statistics were going down. So, for example, in 2016 across New Zealand, ear, nose and throat surgeries dropped. Paediatric surgeries dropped. 
general surgeries dropped across New Zealand, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Mr Speaker. A, a point of order. The... I, I, I realise it was, uh, had two legs, but the question was, will he release those statistics? And he well, referred to them again in his well, I, I, I think, I think you know, it, I might be over-interpreting. I think what the Minister actually said is the, he doesn't need to because they're already in the public arena. Question number nine, the Honourable Paul Goldsmith, which caused me confusion earlier. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister.